How are you? All good. Just trying to get my voice back. Listen, I know you have a lot to talk about. I'm here, and BDOT's here with me, and I appreciate you so much for letting us check in with you today because one thing that's sure. happening is a lot of conspiracy theories, a lot of misinformation, and, you know, to me, you're like my go-to person as they, you know, pulled Morning Joe this morning on MSNBC, so some information's not there, which I don't know how often that's ever happened before. But this that's is crazy. This is all following the assassination attempt on Trump. Now, let's first talk about, um, I mean, what happened, you know, right. just from all of us watching some people were saying that he did not have a bullet graze his ear some people are saying that it was a teleprompter um then they're slowing down footage there's a lot that happened so i just want to hear from you when you look at what's been going on what happened that day well first and foremost what the fbi has released is that there's a 20 year old shooter mm -hmm. they named him they have not found a motive mm. he is a registered republican um and his classmates say he's conservative. Well, that's all they know. Right. Mm. They've been scouring his social media. They have not discovered anything. They've now taken his phone, sent it back to Quantico, Virginia, uh, to test what they literally don't have any further information. So for anybody on the right to say the left did this is a lie. Mm -hmm. yeah. This guy is a Second Amendment gun lover again where it's a republican that's all that we know now people have been saying and i agree with them where's trump's medical team to talk about what happened we don't know because he says a bullet grazed him well we don't actually know that now this the sourcing about the teleprompter and it was glass that was that was coming from sources so the Secret Service or the FBI has not actually confirmed that either. So we still don't know exactly the condition of Trump's ear. If a portion was shot off, we don't know any of that. Okay. Mm. Now, what do you think about the Secret Service? Because I see people are talking about um, criticism for them after this security breach during this rally that this should never have happened. How did a gunman manage to even get on the roof? Well, what people have to understand, and I've been to numerous presidential events, the Secret Service has authority over any area, but they also rely on local and state police to serve various functions. Now, I was very surprised that you did not have any law enforcement on top of that building because that building had a straight line to the rally. I remember when there was an economic summit, there was an event at Rice University, and they literally nailed down every dormitory window overlooking the plaza mm. where the world leaders are going to be. In fact, when I was at Texas A&M, President George H.W. Bush was given a commencement address. I worked for the athletic department. They shut down Kyle Field because there was a spot in Kyle Field that um, was a direct line to the spot where Bush would be standing in G. Raleigh White Coliseum, which was next door. Mm. So um, the Secret Service is extremely detailed in their way. So clearly, there was a significant failure of law enforcement by not having that roof protected. Is the level of security the same for a former president versus an active president? No. Mm. Now, the Secret Service did announce that they added um, to the security apparatus because he's also the presidential candidate. But the highest level of Secret Service is for the president. The vice president's detail is not as high as the president. And again, I've been in both motorcades. I've been, I've been around both. I've been in the presence of presidents and vice presidents. So the presidential detail has the highest level of security of anybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, following this, what do you think about, um, you know, for the Democrats, a lot of, of prominent Democrats have spoken. Joe Biden has spoken. And 
I feel like when something happens on the other side, Donald Trump gets very aggressive. The Republicans in particular attack a lot of people. Nancy Pelosi's husband, when he was attacked, Donald Trump had jokes. And Joe Biden, uh, you know, is calling for everybody to just take a step back. Politics shouldn't be like this. They're glad that he's OK and things like that. What should be happening now as far as with, with our president, who is our leader, Joe Biden, at this point in time, because there's a lot well, of things that are unraveling, too, as we as we're watching this happen. Well, on Saturday, the Biden campaign announced that they were pulling their commercials. Mm -hmm. They announced yesterday that they were bringing them back tonight. <laughs> so 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 that's a natural that is a natural pause. Mm hmm. Remember, he's the president of the United States. Right. So he, he is president of everybody. So his posture has to be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you're absolutely right. The way Trump and Republicans made fun of the beating and the almost murder of Pelosi's husband uh, was shameful. It goes to show you they also joked about the kidnapping attempt of the governor of Gretchen Whitmer, Gretchen Whitmer mm -hmm. the governor of Michigan. So it goes to show you character. This is what I say to people. What happened Saturday should not have happened. No one wanted to see Donald Trump murdered. Donald Trump survived, survived the attempt. A bystander was killed and two of the people were injured. Mm -mm -mm. But politically, the same Donald Trump before Saturday is the one today. Mm. Donald Trump is still a threat to democracy. You see the ruling from Judge Cannon? Yes. Uh, throwing out the case, Trump's true social post. He, he, he defames E. Jean Carroll again. He, demand, he, he calls out the uh, prosecution of January 6th domestic terrorist. So his so-called call for uni didn't even last one day. Yeah, and to be clear, you're right about that. So uh, today the judge dismissed the criminal case against him for holding on to classified documents mm. after leaving office, which get, is illegal. He get overturned on appeal. And then the other should thing that happened is that he has immunity from prosecution for many of his actions in office, and that was a couple of weeks ago the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that. Right. So people need, So the election is still close. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump can still be defeated at the ballot box. And I'm not one of these people who believe, oh, this guarantees his election. It does not. He still, his agenda is still a threat to civil rights. It is still a threat to women's rights. And so folk can better understand the power still rests in their hands to make sure he never walks to the old office again. All right. Well, listen, I'm glad you—I know your voice is struggling right yeah. now. Go ahead, B. Dot. You no, have, no, no, okay. no. Say his voice is— I know. And so, because, look, I need you to—when your voice gets better, we got to have some more conversations, because I definitely want to make sure we talk Absolutely. about Project 2025. You know, I think that's important to hear from you about that. I know you've been addressing this, and mm -hmm. I want to make sure we just keep on talking. You know, the Republican Absolutely. National Convention is in Milwaukee. There's protests happening there right now. Yeah. So we're following all of this. And um, please, like— you you know, Roland, I always defer to you when it comes to this for, to get the real information call, and the call facts. Call me anytime. All right. I'm trying to get my boys back. Call <laughs> me anytime. I want to send you some ginger or something. <laughs> I've, I've been taking a whole lot of that. All right. Well, get better, Roland. Feel better with your throat. I appreciate pause. it. Pause. <laughs> I have to pause myself. All right. Way up.